just a few months ago, the co-op was gearing up to take on the big four banks, mm. but recent troubles have damaged its reputation in the banking business. This morning, though, a new boss takes up the reins. So Steph's going to look at the challenges that he faces. Morning, Steph. Good morning to you both. Yeah, not exactly the easiest job in the world to take on. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, it's definitely going to be a busy few weeks, even years, for Neil Brooker, who's the new chief executive of the Cooperative Bank. Now, he's one of the new faces at the biggest mutual organisation in the country. But he's got a few problems to fix. The bank has been in the headlines a lot recently. Earlier this year, the company reported an annual loss of more than £600 million. Then last month, one of the international rating agencies downgraded the firm's bonds to junk status. In other words, they think it's less likely the company will be able to pay back its debts. And finally, it had to pull out of a deal to buy 630 bank branches being sold by Lloyds. Well, with me now to discuss this is Peter Hunt, who's an expert in cooperatives and mutuals. Good morning to you, morning, Peter. Uh, just to put customers at ease here, this is not the bank about to go bust or anything. This is just problems that the new chief executive has got to sort out to turn it around, isn't it? All banks are trying to build a capital base at the moment, and it's no different in a cooperative bank. It's difficult in a, an economy that's uh, not growing very quickly. So, um, you know, it's a tough job, but um, they've got new leadership in place and the plan, you know, the customers love the cooperative bank. So the customers don't need to worry at this no. point then. Uh, and just explain the cooperative model of a business, how the ownership works. Well, what's different about a co-op and uh, a traditional type of bank is that the customers own it. And so the purpose of the organisation is to serve them, not to share, serve the shareholders, not to make profits for shareholders, not to build share value and get dividends for shareholders, mm -hmm. but to concentrate totally on what they're offering to the customers. Do you think that's held them back then? Well, actually, no. I mean, it, it, over the whole of the period of the financial crisis, they've been growing and people have been choosing to bank with the cooperative bank. They've been sick to the back teeth of um, big bonuses and big banks that have not really thought about them as individuals. So um, it's a popular bank and it's a popular model across the world. But it does make their strategy different, doesn't it? It makes them less risk averse, for example. More risk averse, sorry. Yeah, it makes them more risk averse. It makes them more concentrating on basic banking, on the retail products they're offering, rather than trying to get involved in you know, crazy investment schemes or uh, things that even many of the boards of these businesses didn't understand. But other banks have done, when we look at how banks' profits have done, it's often the risky side of the business that's managed to make a bit of money. We know that that's caused some of the problems too, but now that's often where the most money's made. Do you think the cooperative, uh, you know, why do you think it's struggled then if it's not because of um, it not being as risky? Well, you shouldn't forget that... Um, £75 billion of taxpayers' money has been spent on propping up traditional banks. That's not happened in the mutual sector. Cooperative Bank and other banks have not needed to have uh, government support. And so what they've been able to do is just really concentrate on what they do best, which is looking after their customers. Um, it's, it's a model that's really popular and that people are choosing to go to rather than go away from. OK, Peter, well, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, that's it for me for now.